We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Oscar De La Hoya claims the train is now left for Jamal Charlo to face Canelo. And Canelo has plenty of options. We unpack. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It definitely helps the channel. Now, Oscar De La Hoya, he did an interview, link in the description. And he basically said that they tried to make the Charlo fight last year. And apparently, according to him, he's saying Charlo or someone on Charlo's team refused it. Listen. No, look, unfortunately, I mean, we're still four months away, so we have a lot of time. And I'm leaving to Mexico actually right now uh, to go sit down with Canelo and, and his team and map out the Cinco de Mayo. But we offered, we offered Charlo a um, pretty lucrative deal to fight Canelo last year. And uh, I don't know who turned it down. I'm pretty sure it wasn't Charlo, but I don't know who did. Uh, but that that train already left. I mean, and it's unfortunate. But Canelo has many fighters to to fight. Um, from 160 to 75, we'll we're, we'll decide in the next couple of days. So, you heard it out the horse's mouth. De La Hoya says somebody allegedly on Charlo's team turned this offer down. We unpack coming to you live. Smash the like button. Um, this sounds non-believable. First of all, this mysterious offer, I've never heard ta talked about really. Um, I never heard Charlo really come out and say, yeah, they offered me some peanuts or chump change or whatever. I don't even remember any of this being in the news sources or anything. So that's one little tidbit. Some of it's circumstantial. Second of all, Charlo has continually maintained that he wants to fight the perceived two best guys at middleweight triple g and canelo you know guys with great skill and it'd be an honor to share the ring i have it on videotape i was in the barclay center with him and a ton of other fighters in the hallway and i have it on tape where he said it he said it i have it on tape multiple times i i have it when i covered his fight with brandon adams in houston charlo specifically said he wants canelo errol spence in that particular press conference got up in front of everyone got the mic you know the pr people gave the mic and he asked a question he said man you've been trying to chase down the canelo fight and the triple g fight for so long you know what gives because it don't seem like them guys want to fight you and everyone started laughing because you know errol spence fellow texan was asking the question and he said man i need all the lions only family to support and we just gonna keep knocking down doors until they gotta fight me he said canelo can't leave until he fights me he can't retire without fighting me you know we could do it in texas he said hey i'll even do it in dallas and everyone start laughing so um the walls are closing in like i've told you for this situation there it really is because charlo he has some options now like at one point it looked like the zone had all the top guys outside of charlo from 60 to 68 but they've fumbled the ball fumbled the bag in many ways made canelo wait for ufc 244 bad look canelo moved up to fight kovalev who everyone knows was coming off a very vulnerable performance and he hadn't looked like the crusher since andre ward etc right and you know he he chose to become the franchise champion rather than fight this man you see on the screen jamal charlo his mandatory at first it was golovkin's mandatory canelo beat golovkin so he inherited those problems and charlo you know the thing i respect about well you know what i respect about jamil he just got his belt back as you see in the picture 
So that's respectable. He didn't want really no other fight. The only reason Jamel fought Jorge Cota, who just got a knockout after the Charlo knockout. So that shows you that Cota is a solid guy, right? But the only reason Jermail even fought him was because Tony Harrison pulled out with an alleged injury. So that's respectable behavior from one Charlo. And then the thing I respect about Jamal Charlo in this situation is he staked his claim. He said numerous of times that he wants to fight Canelo. He wants to fight Triple G, make it happen. Let's give the fans what they want. I want to prove I'm the best, but he don't look thirsty the way he's doing it. Like he wants to fight him as a competitor, but he's not like going out of his way to look crazy or saying like double talk and stuff like that. He just he, he's still paving his own path because he knows them guys got to see him somehow, some way they got to see him you know last man standing so i guess that's what it is it's not it's not just looking thirsty he is working on his own path in the meantime as well versus some other guys they want to fight another guy an a side guy or whatever and it seems like their whole world revolves only around mentioning that person's name jamal charlo he knows that he's a star you know he's making money and he knows these guys are going to have to fight him or they're going to be made to look bad, you know. But here's him on the Stephen A. Smith show. Look, Jamal Charlo wants to fight Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez, Stephen A. Smith. 154,000 views one month ago. And Canelo even put this a month ago. Canelo and Eddie Reynoso on Jamal Charlo. Let's fight. It would be a great fight. You're a great fighter. So Canelo and Canelo and Eddie Reynoso admits that Charlo's a great fighter and Charlo was allegedly called out by Canelo even though his name is not even really sounding like it's in the hat so it, it sounds really suspect with with De La Hoya he's not telling the full story that's what it honestly sounds like he's missing out pieces of this and that like his story just sounds too shaky because Charlo's calling Canelo out we know Canelo last year was you're saying that they offered Charlo the like how come nobody heard about any of this nobody heard about any of this the whole time Canelo was supposed to be getting the franchise champion and all that the week Charlo's fighting Brandon Adams I was in Houston I ate at Papa Do's you know and I remember getting the news and I actually was tired because I'm from Cali and I flew to Texas so I was in my hotel room and I woke up to the news of Canelo being this franchise and I'm like reading through it and I'm like, what is franchise champion? What would it? And then I end up meeting Blue Blood at Papa Do. That's exactly what happened. You know what I mean? So if you had offered like De La Hoya saying Charlo a fight, then how come none of that news came out until right now? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because that was a horrible look for Canelo. Because everyone's like, damn, he don't, he really don't want to fight Big Charlo. He don't want to fight Big Charlo, right? So you could have easily said something right there. You wait <laughs> nine months because that fight was in the summer. So you wait almost a year to reveal that you sent an offer that was allegedly rejected. Man, the cloud chasing with the zone is looking really bad. Eddie Hearn says he sent an offer to Charlo for seven million or what these guys are saying are he said it was a pretty lucrative deal de la hoya um eddie hearns is saying he's sending phenomenal money and seven million dollars and a deal that charlo can't pass up and all this and then tim smith with pbc one of al Heyman's right hand men he just did the pbc podcast and says i don't know who he sent the offer to but i'm sure somewhere in his head he sent it to somebody Meaning they're, they're basically denouncing that we didn't get no massive offer from Eddie Hearn. So I, I basically don't know who he's talking about. So between um, Andrade getting his team sending some alleged offer and then to make that. Listen, this is why they can't do this to me in boxing, because I, I follow the sport too intently. Andre literally just did a video, right? An uh, interview or excuse me yeah andre demetrius andre literally did an interview recently the guy has one name 
like the guy whoever's channel is right i could find it i'm gonna find it bro is the here it is right there this tobin this interview right here and he was specifically just so you could everything that new media does there's a paper trail so in this particular interview where demetrius andre was being asked questions about the future and also his upcoming fight he says that eddie hearn you know that he has to get past lucas keeler just listen hold on he was he was specifically asked about Charlie. Be humble because it gets wired out there. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> like Del Rey's a little. It's gonna be like because I mean the sport been in big fights before, but Super Bowl's doing. I'm I'll find it. 2008 Olympian in my head, <laughs> and I um, a fight during Super Bowl weekend, and I've just been in there with an opponent. You know, it can, it could go both ways. You know, I'm not really into like you know picking a mind. It's good to you know if you nothing to take it away from me he's a, it's good that i got, got i'll find it obvious um, i still got a lot of fight left Bredo down in um weight division um yeah i mean it's great to you know. yeah, but um as the years go on like how what, what do you try and stay disciplined the most to 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 keep getting better and to keep sharpening well i'm such a huge undefeated record you know that the world is still miss one or like you know bows down in on somebody's press conference usually or after their fight unless it's set up that way to like me and you are fighting next so i get in the ring because i always respect the fighter because it's not easy getting in the ring you know sure. this is the toughest sport there is one of the toughest sport there is so i you know give respect because getting out that ring is it's not easy um but at the same time, if you're calling my name, if you're saying, like, you know, who's Demetrius Andre, who's this guy, blah, 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 what have he done, I'm going to come to you and be like, hey, get where I got. And you, oh, okay, cool. All right. I'm, I'm glad we got that clear, people. Have you have you gotten any word back that was with Eddie Hearn uh, threw uh, an offer out to, uh, to Charlo uh, to, to get you guys going? Is there anything buzzing on that? Because you guys have been... You know, it's it's been squaring off a long time, and obviously, be a match, a unification match, everybody wants to see. Yeah, you know, um, right now, I believe Eddie Hearns is probably just focused on me getting past this fight, this Luke Killer fight right now, and anything after that, we will, you know, put more t uh, attention into as far as making that deal, or even the other way around, saying, you know, Showtime offer me a big deal, and then I go over to Showtime for one fight and fight them. Yeah. You know, but um, they're running around saying that they're their own promoter. Um, they can do whatever they want, go to from different networks. So it's therefore why not why not come over here where like one, all the guys in the middleweight divisions are like me, Triple G, you got Danny Jacobs, you got Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah, but they're Canelo. not fighting. I mean, the list kind of goes on in that and from the middleweight division on. So therefore, why why wouldn't you come over here where you can tangle with the best? I guess you like being the paper champ. <laughs> but like from So that was five days ago that was uploaded. So that's a recent interview with Andrade, and he says, I think that Eddie Hearn is just focused on me getting past Lucas Keeler, and then we'll handle square business with anything else and decide that after. Or maybe I even go to Showtime to fight Charlo. So what happened to Eddie Hearn saying he sent Charlo a massive deal, and now the fighter himself that this massive deal was sent for Charlo to face is saying that I got to get past Lucas Keeler, my scheduled January 30th fight. And that's the first order of business. And then he downplayed it. So, you know, it's just a bad look with the zone right now. It really is because De La Hoya is claiming this man was sent some kind of secret offer. Nobody publicized. Nobody talked about last year. Canelo and Triple G didn't fight on the zone. And that would have been a great fight for the fans. DAZN, like, explain this to me. DAZN wanted Canelo versus Triple G3. We know that much. They've been on record in saying that. So in lieu of Canelo refusing and not being contractually stipulated to fight against Triple G, which is horrible because everybody thought and assumed, hey, why are we getting... Canelo over here in Triple G. Everyone thought, hey, Triple G coming over there, that was going to be a likely match that they made. But they couldn't get Canelo to agree. These guys are, with this business and the double talk in the age of digital media, digital mob, you know, and new media, they're stumbling on their own feet if you pay attention. Once again, if Canelo Triple G3 was desired by DAZN, 
but they had nothing in writing to force Canelo. And he said, I'm done with Golovkin. They couldn't get him to fight. So this would have been a hell of a consolation fight with this mysterious deal that Oscar De La Hoya is now claiming that Jamal Charlo, his team turned down. Right? So that would have been beneficial not only for the fans and, and Canelo's sake with the whole franchise champion stuff, but it would have been beneficial for DAZN to, to land subscribers because Charlo versus Canelo, as I've been telling you guys, is a big fight. You could put that in Texas at the AT&T Stadium. That's a big fight. One guy's from Texas. The other guy's Canelo. That would be a huge dance partner. So why are we just now hearing about this? Why would why didn't DAZN get this done? You know, it's just looking too funny. Another issue is it was highly publicized that Canelo Alvarez was not on great terms with De La Hoya. So it, that's another reason. So you weren't on proper speaking terms with uh, Canelo, but somehow this was good to get done. We know that Canelo was mad at, Golo at Golden Boy. We know that. They were mad that Kovalev got away because he felt lowballed and he ended up fighting and looking vulnerable to Anthony Yard. And then they fumbled the ball again, trying to negotiate with Derevchenko, not satisfying him. Derevchenko's team and his manager, Keith Connolly, they came out and said, man, we got offered more money to fight Gennady Golovkin than Canelo, which makes absolutely no sense. Canelo's supposed to be the man because this was before the UFC 244 fiasco where Canelo had to wait for Nate Diaz and um, Jorge Masvidal, right? But these all the, all these things added up. Canelo's supposed to be the man. He's supposed to be getting $36.5 to fight and A-side to buy. He's the guy to fight Floyd Mayweather, right? He's the cash cow. He's done a million plus a couple of times on, on pay-per-view. He is supposed to be the established star. How come people are complaining about getting lowballed and turning down your offer? You know, how come Kovalev got away the first negotiations and end up fighting Anthony Yard if you wanted to be the, you know, the buffer and pay Yard some step aside money? And then it would have been better if Kovalev didn't have that fight with Yard because he had a quick turnaround and he nearly got stopped in round nine. So that hurt the performance when Canelo knocks him out. Man, this is just looking like amateur hour. So I don't believe what De La Hoya is saying in its entirety. Who did you send the offer to? You know, because this happened similar situation with Top Rank and uh, Danny Garcia. Top Rank says they sent an offer to Danny Garcia and Danny Garcia and his dad, Angel Gar. I speak the truth. They admit that they did receive some kind of communications from Top Rank, but they said nothing gets done all the offers go through Al, and I made videos about this, the new media way. Why? You know how to get the fights done. None of these deals that I've seen can get done without the blessing of Al Heyman, who is the advisor. Why would Charlo and Adrian Broner and Floyd Mayweather and Gervonta, who just tweeted the other day, Al, ha Al Heyman the GOAT, right? And Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia and Errol Spence and Jamel and Jamal and all these guys, why would they have Al Heyman as their advisor if they don't utilize his his information and tutelage and they can make side deals like G Money in New Jack City with Pookie, you know, or Scotty, Scotty Appleton. <laughs> you know, it just don't make sense. The, the reason he's their advisor, obviously, is because this is a business. And that's the person that they entrust with a portion of delivering their their career. They got a cut man. They got a strength and conditioning coach. They got a trainer. You know, they got probably someone who handles maybe PR stuff. Then they got Al Heyman as the advisor. So they have these people on their team in place. Al Heyman's not the one holding pads, but he's doing his job, which is to advise the fighters what they should do or, or not do. So you have to listen to what De La Hoya said. There's a lot of value. See, I used to rap. You know, I still rap, but um, making music and stuff. That's why like Eminem's album, his new album is dope, you know, but you have to understand the content. You have to understand what he's saying. Break it down. He says these rappers like I Liz, nowadays, my pupil, he said it's like the pupils are cornier, cornier and cornea. 
you know he is a play on words so i listen to like the words he says yeah, I mean, we're still four months away so we have a lot of time listen and i'm leaving to mexico actually right now uh to go sit down with canelo and and his team and map out the sink of the mic smash the like button but we offered we offered charlo um pretty lucrative deal to fight canelo last year and uh i don't know who turned it down i'm pretty sure that it wasn't charlo but i don't know who did uh, right there everything goes through al Heyman, as i just mentioned to you he says we offered an offer to charlo and i don't know who turned it down i'm pretty sure it was not charlo but i don't know who it was but they turned down the deal and now the train has left i mean that doesn't even sound realistic because who else would turn down the deal other than their advisor you know or like a direct person you know how, how basically how do you not know how do you not know who turned down the deal there's only a couple people you would, it's not like you would have to go to charlo's family members or or whatever to facilitate the deal or go to his uh like a strength and conditioning coach or uh, a personal assistant there's only a couple people that you would even go to to make a charlo fight especially if it's talking about um crossing over to different platforms and leaving showtime or fox or whatever to fight on his own i mean there's only one guy that handles that and Al Heyman and Golden Boy De La Hoya used to work together. So I'm pretty sure that he knows that. So it, it, to me, this stuff sounds foolish and it doesn't sound believable. Again, how do you not know who turned down the offer, but you you didn't want to blame Charlo, but you don't know who did it? That I mean, this is just poor business. This is a poor business because like if I go to like if I get quoted a price on something, like let's say I went to a car dealership and I was interested in buying a car and I get quoted a price, I'm gonna get that person's business card, I'm gonna get their name, you know, I'm gonna take a picture with them, something. So when I, if I say, I'm gonna think about it and come back tonight and um, I wanna purchase that vehicle and that's not the mark, it's not the price that's advertised on the windshield or something like that where I may have issue, then at least I have some recourse because I'm like, no, 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 I talked to Mike. Mike told me he could give this price and whatever. And then from that point, now you have some recourse and they can investigate or something like that. Or if you call a store to return some without a receipt or whatever, you always like notate who you talk to. That's just little stuff that I do on in my personal life to make life smoother so I can hold people to what they say. This man is running a business and Canelo has the most lucrative contract in sports history, they said, and he can't tell us who they, they don't have like a paper trail of who you specifically talked to. Was it Al Heyman? Was it Sam Watson? Was it um, Tim Smith? You don't know who you talked to or who turned down uh, a mega fight that you could have prevented or excuse me, you could have presented to DAZN that would have drove subscriptions. Unbelievable. You know, there's more to it. Like um, there's more to it. Somehow, some way there's more to it. You know, where's this offer? Was it typed up and written up an actual contract? Like, and I'm not allowing that new media. We're not allowing that because old media going to run with it and act like Charlo's ducking, even though the man's been calling out Canelo for a, a strong, strong minute, you know, and now they go, oh, De La Hoya said it. it must be true. De La Hoya has multiple lawsuits. You got to show me something, you know, he got there's there's character um admissions he's like admittedly checked himself into rehab and stuff like that and hey i'm not here to kick a man wise down knock people for their personal problems i just seen a video with delante west that was really sad you know because he was he's really i i heard he was doing bad but he's doing real bad like the man like drugs messed up his mind so you know i'm not here to kick a person for their personal demons luckily i'm fortunate in my upbringing and that's never been a um, part of my life but um it's just you got to challenge the 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 character if people have certain infractions period you know like in the story sounds sketch it just it is what it is and de la hoya's story doesn't add up it doesn't add up because this would have alleviated and got the monkey off canelo's back during the time where everyone was like wow he's the franchise champion that's a bad look you know he could have just said no 
we tried to make the Charlo fight and he ducked us. He, you know, and then came up with it. Then you wait like almost a year later and then say somebody with no name. You got to put, man, you got to put a name to that. Who who did it? Who said it? And, and, and you're not even on good terms with Canelo from what was being published and reported. Canelo was, you know, having this feud with you. So I don't believe it. I think that even if there was some type of offer, they didn't go through Al Heyman, who they should have went to. The like, that's like okay. I got one older brother and one older sister. If I had, if in my household it was understood that major decisions, like if I want to go sp spend the night at my friend's house, I'm talking about when I was a kid. If I want to go spend the night at my friend's house, that decision has to be made by my parents. I couldn't just go to my older sister, or older brother and ask him if I can spend the night or go on this field trip. I had to go. Like I know the rules of my household. It's just proper etiquette, you know? I can't go to my older brother and he grants me permission and then I don't talk to my parents about it. So these promoters are capping. You know, they're acting like they don't know who to go. They there should if someone turned down this fight, you should be able to say Al Heyman turned down the fight. But he, Al, De La Hoya is saying I don't know who did it. You should know because there's only one person you really should be going to to try to make the fight if you're serious. Same thing with Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn saying he sent these offers. And then Tim Tim Smith was like, who? Who'd you, who got the offer? Who'd you send it to? So I, I if, the, if these promoters that have been in the game and run million-dollar businesses or whatever and been in the game for a minute are sending WhatsApp messages or sliding in some a fighter's DM and you know, just saying something or emailing that don't count. That's not a that's not a that's not a true offer. That's not how business is conducted. No more than um, two fighters arguing on the internet on Twitter or whatever is not necessarily making the fight. Because if that was the case, we would have been seeing uh, Tank Davis versus Tevin Farmer and fights like that, where the two have been going back and forth, or Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney or any of them guys. We would have been seeing those fights if that's how business was conducted. So miss me with that. There's more to the story. I don't know if an offer was even made based on how sketched the story sounds. But even if the offer was made, they sent it to the wrong person. It was likely or something to the effect of DAZN needs people. Golden Boy definitely needs people. Um, they maybe offered a low ball deal or offered Charlo a multi fight fight. Like if he beats Canelo, it's a three fight extension, you know, and, and Charlo he don't want he was the mandatory he shouldn't have to sign all these extensions and man just you just got to know who you're dealing with canelo all of his fights in recent memory have had some type of stipulation so that's another thing that's hurting team canelo's uh credibility and de la hoya's statement here is because all of his fights have stipulated rehydration clause he made up his own damn weight division 155 he's um you know catching kovalev after a tough fight and has to fight him with a quick turnaround you know like i said rehydration for for all the guys that are bigger than than canelo like danny jacobs julio cesar chavez rocky fielding kovalev but no rehydration clause for a little amir khan who had to move from 47 got hurt at 47 in his previous fight with chris algeri moved up to canelo way to 155 it's just always something you know all these stipulations and you know, low ball offers. It's just all this stuff is not looking good. And it looks it's looking like the zone doesn't want to fight him. The last thing I'll make in this unpack, because I know I've said most of everything I needed to say and wanted to say. The other thing that looks unbelievable about this situation is that's the whole purpose of negotiation. You don't just negotiate once and then the train is left. Are you kidding me? I mean, if that was the case, then look at Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao. There's been several attempts to make that fight before the fight actually happened, right? It wasn't just like, oh, the train is left because Pacquiao didn't want to take a drug test. It wasn't, oh, the train is left because Pacquiao turned down the 40 million flat. They kept at it. They kept, you know, even though it took years or whatever, it wasn't just like, oh, Pacquiao didn't want these first two deals. The train is left now, you know, but that's what De La Hoya is saying which is another reason that I believe that this is a cop-out. They don't want to fight Jamal Charlo, and they want to keep the gravy train running. They want to take calculated risk, if anything, but the walls are closing in, like I've been telling you. The zone needs a hit. This man is looking vicious, and 
you know, we're just going to continue to see Canelo's star power dwindle unless he fights any of the names that pose a real life threat that people want to see in America, period. Shout out to Jamal Charlo and the movement. But, you know, I, I can't believe what I'm hearing from De La Hoya. There has to be more to the story because, again, all the stuff I provided, why would why would this take so long to come out when you could have, you know, basically exonerated Canelo of, you know, taking away any guilt if you were able to pin this on Jamal Charlo. So it don't sound realistic to me. Let me know what you guys think. That's my thoughts. Jamal Charlo just got to keep plugging away because he's obviously making noise. People are, are paying attention and you see the media and the public is getting more demanding of the fight. So we just got to keep this new media stuff going, digital mob, and we got to just keep making sure the best fights get made. At some point, they have to get made because the pressure is going to grow or people's star power is going to continue to dwindle if they don't eventually get around to some of these fights in a reasonable time. I think Canelo, he's already played the role. He's already played, you know, his hand a couple things in his team's career. Just look at how Charlo's career is looking and look at Canelo's career. Yes, Canelo's making money, but a lot of the decisions aren't being respectable. Meanwhile, Charlo just posted, today was a good day, fight date coming soon. They're keeping him moving. They're keeping him active. He looks like he's on some type of uh, private jet. You know, so things are good. He just has to keep doing what he's doing. And new media is going to keep doing what we've been doing. If you love what I'm doing, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego the future of boxing.